So they fought to the death, around the benched big ships. As Patroclus reached Achilles, his great commander, and wept warm tears, like a dark spring running down some desolate rock face, its shaded currents flowing. And the brilliant runner Achilles saw him coming, filled with pity, and spoke out winging words. Why in tears, Patroclus? Like a girl, a baby running after her mother, begging to be picked up, and she tugs her skirts, holding her back as she tries to hurry off, all tears, fawning up at her till she takes her in her arms. That's how you look, Patroclus, streaming live tears. But why? Some news for the Myrmidons, news for me, some message from Fire that you alone have heard. They tell me Menetius, Actor's son, is still alive, and Peleus, Aeacus' son, lives on among his Myrmidons. If both our fathers had died, we'd have some cause for grief. Or weeping over the Argives, are you? Seeing them die against the hollow ships repaid for their offenses. Out with it now. Don't harbor it deep inside you. We must share it all. With a wrenching groan, you answered your friend, Patroclus, O my rider. Achilles, son of Peleus, greatest of the Achaeans, spare me your anger, please. Such heavy blows have overwhelmed the troops. Our former champions, all laid up in the ships, all are hit by arrows or run through by spears. There's powerful Diomedes, brought down by an archer, Odysseus wounded, and Agamemnon too, the famous spearman. And Eurypylus took an arrow shot in the thigh. Healers are working over them, using all their drugs, trying to bind the wounds. But you are intractable, Achilles. Pray God such anger never seizes me. Such rage, you nurse cursed in your own courage. What good will a man, even in the next generation, get from you unless you defend the Argives from disaster? You heart of iron. He was not your father, the horseman Peleus. Thetis was not your mother, never. The salt gray sunless ocean gave you birth, and the towering blank rocks, your temper so relentless. But still, if deep down some prophecy makes you bulk, some doom your noble mother revealed to you from Zeus, well and good. At least send me into battle, quickly. Let the whole Myrmidon army follow my command. I might bring some light of victory to our Argives, and give me your own fine armor to buckle on my back. So the Trojans might take me for you, Achilles, yes. Hold off from attack and Achaea's fighting sons get second wind, exhausted as they are. Breathing room in war is all too brief. We're fresh, unbroken, the enemy's battle-weary. We could roll those Trojans back to Troy, clear of the ships and shelters. So he pleaded, lost in his own great innocence, condemned to beg for his own death and brutal doom. And moved now to his depth, the famous runner cried, No, no, my Prince Patroclus, what are you saying? Prophecies? None that touch me, none I know of, no doom my noble mother revealed to me from Zeus just this terrible pain that wounds me to the quick. When one man attempts to plunder a man his equal, to commandeer a prize, exalting so in his own power, that's the pain that wounds me, suffering such humiliation. That girl, the sons of Achaea picked her as my prize, and I'd sacked a walled city, won her with my spear. But right from my grasp, he tears her. Mighty Agamemnon, that son of Atreus treating me like some vagabond, some outcast stripped of all my rights. Enough. Let bygones be bygones now. Done is done. How on earth can a man rage on forever? Still, by God, I said I would not relax my anger, not till the cries and carnage came to my own ships. So you, you strap on my splendid armor on your back. You lead our battle-hungry Myrmidons into action. The whole city of Troy comes trampling down on us, daring, wild. Why? They cannot see the brow of my helmet flashing before their eyes. Oh, they'd soon run for their lives and choke the torrent beds of the fields with all their corpses. If only the mighty Agamemnon met me with respect. Now as it is, they're fighting round our camp. No spear rages now in the hand of Diomedes, keen to save the Argives from disaster. I can't even hear the battle cry of Agamemnon break from his hated skull. But it's man-killing Hector calling his Trojans on, his war cries crashing round me, savage cries of his Trojans sweeping the whole plain. 
victors bringing the Argive armies to their knees. Even so, Patroclus, fight disaster off the ships. Fling yourself at the Trojans full force before they gut our halls with leaping fire and tear away the beloved day of our return. But take this command to heart, obey it to the end, so you can win great honor, great glory for me in the eyes of all the Argive ranks. And they, they'll send her back, my lithe and lovely girl, and top it off with troves of glittering gifts. Once you've whipped the enemy from the fleet, you must come back, Patroclus, even if Zeus, the thundering lord of Hera, lets you seize your glory. You must not burn for war against these Trojans, madman, lusting for battle. Not without me. You'll only make my glory that much less. You must not, lost in the flush and fire of triumph, slaughtering Trojans outright, drive your troops to Troy. What if one of the gods who never dies comes down from Olympus heights to intervene in battle? The deadly archer loves his Trojans dearly. No, you must turn back. Soon as you bring the light of victory to the ships, let the rest of them cut themselves to pieces on the plain. Oh, would to God, Father Zeus, Athena, and Lord Apollo, not one of all these Trojans could flee his death. Not one. And no Argive, either. But we could stride from the slaughter, so we could bring Troy's hallowed crown of towers toppling down around us, you and I alone. And so the comrades roused each other now. Sing to me now, you muses. You who hold Olympus's vaulting halls, how fire was first pitched on Achaea's ships. Hector lunged at Ajax, toe to toe, hacked his ashwood pike with a heavy sword, and striking the socket just behind the point, he slashed the head off clean, leaving the shaft, the lop stump, dangling in Ajax's fist, useless. The bronze head bounding away, clanging along the ground, and deep in his heart, brave Ajax knew and shuddered. Here was work of the gods, thundering Zeus on high, cutting him off from battle, dashing all his plans. Zeus determined to grant the Trojans triumph now. So Ajax drew back, out of range, and then they flung their tireless fires at the fast trim ships. She was up in flames at once, engulfed in quenchless fire. In a flash, the blaze went swirling round the stern, and Achilles slapped his thigh and urged Patroclus. To arms, Patroclus, prince and master horseman! I can see the blaze go roaring up the ships. They must not be destroyed. No escape route then. Quick, strap on my gear. I'll rouse the troops. That was all, and Patroclus armed himself in Achilles' gleaming bronze. First, he wrapped his legs with the well-made greaves, fastened behind the heels with silver ankle clasps. Next, he strapped the breastplate round his chest, blazoned with stars, swift Achilles' own. Then, over his shoulders, Patroclus slung the sword, the fine bronze blade with the silver studded hilt, and then the shield strap and the sturdy massive shield, and over his powerful head he set the well-forged helmet, the horsehair crest atop it, tossing, bristling terror. And he took two rugged spears that fit his grip, and Achilles' only weapon Patroclus did not take was the great man's spear, weighted, heavy, tough. No other Achaean fighter could heft that shaft, only Achilles had the skill to wield it well. Pelian ash it was, a gift to his father Peleus, presented by Chiron once, hewn on Pelion's crest to be the death of heroes. Now the war team. Patroclus ordered Automedon to yoke them quickly, a man he honored next to Achilles, breaker of men, always firmest in battle, nerved to wait the call. So at his command, Automedon yoked the horses, the rapid stallions roan beauty and dapple, the team that raced the gales, magnificent team. The storm wind filly, lightfoot, fold for the west wind, grazing the lush green grass along the ocean's tide. And into the traces, he ran the purebred bold dancer. Achilles seized him once when he stormed Aetion's city, a mortal war horse pacing immortal horses now. Prince Achilles, ranging his ranks of Myrmidons, arrayed them along the shelters, all in armor. Hungry as wolves that rent and bolt raw flesh, hearts filled with battle frenzy that never dies. Off on the cliffs, ripping apart some big antlered stag, they gorge on the kill till all their jaws drip red with blood. Then down in a pack they lope to a pooling dark spring, their lean sharp tongues lapping the water's surface. 
belching bloody meat. But the fury, never shaken, builds inside their chests, though their gutted bellies burst. So wild the Myrmidon captains, Myrmidon field commanders, swarming round Achilles, dauntless friends in arms. And there in the midst, Achilles stood like the god of war, urging his charioteers and fighters, bracing shields. Achilles mustered all battalions, positioned in battle order led by captains. Then he imposed a stern command on all his troops. Myrmidons! Not one of you dare forget those threats you hurled from the fast trim ships against the Trojans, all while I raged. And I was the one you blamed, down to the last fighter. Brutal son of Peleus, your mother nursed you on gall, merciless Iron Man, confining your own men to the ships against their will. So home we go in those ships and cut the seas again, since now such deadly anger strikes our captain. Denouncing me, my comrades cluster together, always grumbling. Well, here's a tremendous work of battle. Look, blazing before your eyes, and just the sort you longed for all these days. So each man, tense with courage, fight the Trojans down. That was a cry that fired each soldier's heart. Hearing the king's command, the ranks pulled closer, tight as a mason packs a good stone wall. Blocks on granite blocks for a storied house that fights the ripping winds. Crammed so close, the crested helmets, the war shields bulging, jutting, buckler to buckler, helm to helm, man to man, mass tight, and the horsehair crests on glittering helm horns brushed as they tossed their heads. The battalions bulked so dense, and out before them all, two men took battle stations, Patroclus and Automedon, seized with a single fury to fight in the comrades' vanguard far in front. But Achilles strode back to his shelter now and opened the lid of the princely inlaid sea chest that glistening-footed Thetis stowed in his ship to carry, filled to the brim with war shirts, windproof cloaks, and heavy fleecy rugs. And there it rested, his handsome well-wrought cup. No other man would drink the shining wine from its glowing depth, nor would Achilles pour the wine to any other god, none but Father Zeus. Lifting it from his chest, he purified it with sulfurous crystals first, then rinsed it out with water running clear, washed his hands and filled it with bright wine, and then, taking a stand before his lodge, he prayed, pouring the wine to earthbend, scanning the high skies, and the god who loves the lightning never missed a word. King Zeus, Pelagian Zeus, Lord of Dodona's holy shrine, dwelling far away, brooding over Dodona's bitter winters. Your prophets, dwelling round you, Zeus the Selly, sleeping along the ground with unwashed feet. If you honored me last time and heard my prayers and rained destruction down on all Achaea's ranks, now, once more, I beg you, bring my prayer to pass. I myself hold out with the beach ships here, but I send my comrade forth to war with troops of Myrmidons. Launch glory along with him, High Lord of Thunder, Zeus. Fill his heart with courage, so even Hector learns if Patroclus has the skill to fight his wars alone. My friend in arms, or his hands can rage unvanquished only when I go wading in and face the grind of battle. But once he repels the roaring onslaught from the ships, let him come back to me and our fast fleet, unharmed, with all my armor around him, all our comrades fighting around my friend. So Achilles prayed, and Zeus, in all his wisdom, heard those prayers. One prayer the father granted, the other he denied. Patroclus would drive the onslaught off the ships, that much Zeus granted, true, but denied him safe and sound return from battle. Once Achilles had poured the wine and prayed to Zeus, he returned to his shelter, stowed the cup in the chest, and took his stand outside, his spirit yearning still to watch Achaeans and Trojans struggle to the death.